Saturday, Father. I am going to spend the day on the beach. Will you come with me, or will you stay at home? No, I shall be going to the office. I wish I could take the day off, but with me, business comes first. Will you come with me, Mother? No. I have many things to do. The house must be cleaned from top to bottom. In the next part of our English conversation lesson, our friends Mr. and Mrs. Smith and their daughter Miss Smith will be spending a day at the seaside until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning then. Tomorrow's script, Mr. Toy. Thank you. Tomorrow will be soon enough. How about cutting out, baby? I'll buy you a drink. Sorry, I've got some translation to do. Do not work too hard, Miss Ken, or you will strain your mind. Come up, Graves, please. Colonel Graves, Chan Tung here. I must talk to you right away. No, 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 no. Not at your office. I've got my family in Hankow to think of. Very well. At the surgery, the other doctor. In ten minutes. I'll be back after the rehearsal. <laughs> Every government has its secret service branch. America, it's CIA. France, Deuxième Bureau. England, MI5. My messy job? Well, that's when they usually call on me or someone like me. Oh, yes. My name is Drake. John Drake. Yes, sir. With Dr. Jones or Dr. Singh? The other doctor. With the other doctor? Yes. Your name, sir? Drake. Please, come this way. Thank you. Come in. Mr. Drake to see you, sir. Thank you. Ah, Colonel. Hello, Drake. Oh, Bob? How are you? Glad to see you, John Boy. Hey, it's not worth thinking about, does it? Oh, it uh, does, you know. Why the uh, cloak and dagger stuff? Meeting you here? Yeah. Well, we're being specially cautious just now. We suspect that we've enemies in the camp. Really? Mm. If they find out that you're working for us, you won't get very far. Uh, Except perhaps for the bottom of the harbor with your throat cut. Uh, really, um, what's it all about? Well, for some time now, the Chinese on the mainland have been receiving up-to-the-minute information from Hong Kong. Latest details of our fleet movements and other useful tidbits. I see. And you think that they have a new shortwave transmitting station? No, it can't be. Why not? Well, we'd know. We have a 24-hour monitoring service. No, this time they've thought of something rather better. For instance? Well, possibly a way of using our own daily broadcasts. I see. And what led you to this uh, monumental conclusion, Bob? Well, a couple of weeks back, I was approached by a Chinese sound technician. Uh, he suspected there was some funny business going on in one of our programs, the English conversation lesson. Well, I arranged to meet him. Didn't expect much to come of it. And then he was shot. So I began to take an interest. Who shot him? We don't know. It happened in the studio. There was a lot of panic and confusion. And the killer got away. What else? Well, now, our agents on the mainland have come up with one rather curious fact. There's one program from here that the Chinese over there have never jammed. The, uh, the English conversation lesson? Mm. Of course, we could cancel the program, but we'd soon find some other channel. And what we've got to do is to find out how they're working it and root out the whole organization. And that's my little show. I don't think so. Mm. All right. Well, for a start, I might get a job in the radio station. Good idea. I'll put a word in for you with the director. Well, oh, second thoughts. Better if I have a less formal introduction. Tell me, can you find me a man on your staff who could put up a really good fight, if necessary? <laughs> Sergeant Carab. <laughs>
Thanks, man. Worth a drink? You haven't been here long, have you? Uh, no, I... Uh, long enough to work up a thirst. Then there's something you ought to know. Hong Kong, strictly number one, Phil. Never help anyone but yourself in this town. Uh, uh, whiskey. Make it two. You busted? Flat. Off the ship? Uh, yes, came out here with a movie company, uh, doubling for the star. When shooting finished, I went on a bat, woke up the next morning, no movie company. Here I am. You're an actor? Yeah, well, uh, equity swears I am. Kazan's not so sure. What's your story? Oh, I work at the radio station. Oh, really? Uh, did they ever use any actors? I told you, man, this is number one, Bill. Okay. Thanks for the drink, Owen. If you get robbed on the way home, you know who did it. Oh, wait a minute. Hey! You did me a favor. This, this is just to make us quits. There's a show I work on. I haven't got much drag, but I'll ask if they can use you. Oh, that's, that's great. Mr. Brown told me he sells tables and chairs and beds and carpets. Everything for the house. Does the company pay you a commission on the furniture you sell? Or do you work on a salary, Mr. Brown? I am paid a salary by the week and also a percentage, as in most capitalist countries, where the individual worker is encouraged to show initiative. In the next part of our English conversation lesson, Mr. Brown will make a proposal of marriage to Miss Smith. Until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, then. Well, I can't wait until tomorrow morning, Miss Kent. You did very well, Mr. Drake. I'm not a bit nervous, was he? Well, there's nothing to be nervous about, is there? They can't see you on radio. Tomorrow's script, Mr. Drake. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, do they always give you the script a day early? You're supposed to study it, man. Method. Get the hidden meaning. When the guy says, have another cup of tea, what's his real motivation? Dig? Don't take any notice. Americans are always flippant. Much too flippant. Only about important things. I know. My father was American. What'd your father do to you anyway, baby? It's what he didn't do. See you tomorrow, Mr. Drake. Right, of course, goodbye. That cornball chick, that's all she knows. Her father was an American. Big deal. Come on, man, let's go. Al, Mr. Drake, just a moment. I wanted to ask you, I'm having a few friends in this evening. Would you care to come around for a drink? Oh, very nice of you, Mr. Sawyer. Right. <laughs> What do you think? You tell me. The work you're doing is very dangerous, I'm. You may need me. Yes, but if they find me being protected by a bodyguard, they'll become suspicious, won't they? A nice thought, Carib, but uh, no thanks. Well, we can uh, eliminate the scriptwriter for a start because the scripts are prepared two or three days in advance, whereas the news that gets through to the mainland is right up to the minute. Do any of the actors make last-minute changes in their lines? No, no, they read them from the scripts just as they are. Unless, of course, it's the the way they read them. You mean stressed words, that sort of thing? Yeah. That narrows the field down to the three actors on the show. And the producer, Mr. Toy. He makes the announcements. I wonder, could you get me a character background on each one of them by this evening? Sure, but why by this evening? Well, Mr. Toy is throwing a party. They're all going to be there. Al Jason, Mrs. Harkness, Susan Kent, all of them. What are you cooking up? Well, it seems to me that we can't really know anything about the code until we discover who's sending it out, can we? Oh, I can't bring them all in. Good question. No, no. Chin Tung's murder is enough reason no, for that. If you don't mind, Bob, leave it to me. Let me set the trap. Uh, come into my parlor, said the fly to the spider. What kind of a trap? Well, uh, I go to the party. I talk a lot. I concentrate on each one of them at a time. I say the sort of things that should scare the guilty party, and then I wait for one of them to make a counter move. Could be dangerous. Well, not necessarily. I'm expecting trouble. I'm ready for it. This isn't Washington. I'd hate you to get yourself murdered. Oh, thanks, sir. Appreciate that. Oh, we've known each other a long time, Drake. You mean that you're not just speaking to me as a policeman? Well, I hope I'm speaking as an old friend. You'd be happier if I had a bodyguard? Much happier. Will you let me? Let you? Who are you kidding? I'm not kidding. All right, I'll take your word for it. I'll, uh... I have some news for you after the party, I hope. About, about midnight. I'll wait for your calls. All right. 
So uh, you think I don't take my work seriously, Mrs. Harkness? Mr. Drake, I never said anything. Shall I tell you why I don't take my work seriously? Because there's something funny about that program of ours. Tom, ti tom, ti tom, ti tiddle, ti tom, ti tom, tom. See what I mean? I haven't the faintest idea. Oh, yes, I think you have, Mrs. Harkness, because you see, I don't sell furniture at all. I am an actor with a very good ear. Mr. Jason, I, I don't think Mr. Drake feels no, no, not quite perfectly. Him. All right, thank you, Mrs. Harkness. <laughs> Lay off the juice, man. You want to get stranded again? Oh, I think you're right, Jason. From now on, I'll be like you. I mind my own business. Oh, uh, Miss Kent, having a nice serious time. Oh, I'm not always serious, Mr. Drake. Such a pretty girl, they said, but always so serious. Who said? Well, oh, not me, they, because I know why you're serious. You do? Oh, yes, you're not happy with the job you're doing. Oh, I like my job well enough, Mr. Drake. It's easy to make fun of it. We can't all play Shakespeare. Mm, that's true, but what about your other job? You mean my translation? No, I don't mean your translation. Then I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, you do. But let's leave that for a moment. You always lived in Hong Kong. Yes, I was born and brought up here. I live with my uncle now. Oh, yes, I remember. Uh, the girl will never be able to forgive her father. I loved my father, Mr. Drake. But he couldn't forgive me for being half Chinese. Yet my mother could forgive him for being American. Uh, well, forgive me for being a little, uh... <clears throat> well, this is, uh... It's a great party you're giving here, Mr. Toy, oh boy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Drake. I'm glad you could come. Oh, so am I, because as a matter of fact, I... I wanted the opportunity to have a little chat with you. I'm, uh, I'm by way of being a friend of a friend of yours. Did you know that? I hope I have many European friends. Oh, no, no, he wasn't a European. Who do you mean? Well, he knew you. He was interested in you, passionately interested in you, but he had an accident. He, he got himself shot in the studio. Oh, Cheng Tung. Yeah, that's right. But uh, there's no need to worry. You see, I'm... I'm the only person in the world who knows why he was so interested in you. Only person in the world. Excuse me. Go. <laughs> Come on, man, let's cut out. What's the matter? What's the matter? Aren't I popular? Is that? Like a typhoid bug. Man, that's all I needed was to get mixed up with a... Uh, come on, where do you live? <sighs> me, anywhere, everywhere. Well, you can sleep it off on my couch. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go and have a couple of drinks someplace first, shall we, huh? All right. That's right. Help yourself. I knew you were going to be trouble. It's the last time in my life I ever helped anyone. Right now, you better start thinking about helping yourself. I'm going to. I'm not saying a word. Every morning, they sent you the message to be transmitted. You coded it, and then you went through the lines in your script and but picked I out never, the words. I never even took the script home with me at night. No, that's right. You left it in the studio, didn't you? But when you picked it up in the morning, it was marked. The words to be emphasized for that day. Well, keep guessing. What'd you do with the old scripts? I gave them to the Salvation Army. I got rid of them fast. Do you think I'm stupid? Yes, frankly, I do. If you'd have been smart. Oh, 
Yes, would you get me four, five, seven, and two, one? If you'd have been smart, you'd have left when that unfortunate sound engineer, Chen Tung, discovered what you were doing. Man, I'm still alive, ain't I? Oh, yes, but you're, you're going to be away for a long time. Hello? Colonel Graves, yes, hello. We're in, uh, we're in Hotel La Paz, room 28. Yeah, thank you. Look, man, why are you trying to bug me? I haven't got anything to give you. You mean you don't know who any of them are? You have no contacts? About three months ago, I got a ring in the middle of the night. Do I want to earn some bread? Sure I do. So the next day, I leave the script at the studio. I'm in business. How do they pay you? Well, I get a letter from the post office every Friday. General delivery. Why do I want to ask any questions? It was like getting money from home. And then one night, they called me after Chin Tung got rubbed out. They didn't want me to get any sudden ideas. You mean they told you that they didn't want you to, uh, to quit? Yeah. Why to try and kill me tonight? The way you were sounding off at that party, I had to do something to shut you up. I was the one that brought you in on this program. Someone might have thought that I'd leaked it all. Well, you know what this town's like. You can't tell a cowboy from an Indian. If they thought I'd crossed them, I couldn't walk down the street in broad daylight. You're quite a character, aren't you, Mr. Jason? What do they pay you, 100 a week? 150 American dollars. Man, I was starving to death on that cheesy program. Uh, well, you won't have to worry about it anymore, because by the time that you get out, you'll be eligible for the old people's pension. Yeah? I'll be out in about two years, home and dry, in good old New York. You want to bet? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, Colonel, here he is, Al Jason. Attempted homicide, conspiracy, Assault with a deadly weapon, conspiracy to commit treason, and, oh, I forgot, he murdered Chen Tung. Man, you know I didn't. Well, somebody did, and you're all that we've got. All right, come on, Buster. Look, man, I'm telling the truth. I got nothing to give you. What do you want from me? Deal the cards. I'll play. All right. You stay here tonight. Colonel, can you put a guard on him to make sure he doesn't make any phone calls? And tomorrow morning, you go along to the radio station. You pick up your script and read it in the studio, exactly as you've always been doing. All right? I was gambling. Gambling I could break their code before the broadcast in the morning. I had Jason's script, the one they'd already marked for the next day, and I had the tapes of a dozen earlier broadcasts. I knew which voice to listen to now. I am glad we decided to go for a Jason drive is... this afternoon. And by watching the volume indicator when Jason was speaking, I could pick out the chosen words. It was so subtly done that the ordinary ear might never have noticed it, but the machine did. The first part of the job was to go through the tapes and list the words that he emphasized. But that was only the beginning. I still had to make sense of them, find some relationship between them. But the words themselves meant nothing. They were ciphers in a code, probably some quite simple code, because the words available to them in any given day's script were limited by the lines Jason had to speak. But nothing seemed to work. I tried reversing the order of the words. The shop won't make straight deer. I tried writing them in a column, one under the other. Then, suddenly, a name jumped out of the page at me. A name formed by the third letter of each word. Nautilus. I tried it with one of the other groups. K-O-R-E-A-N. Korean. It was beginning to make sense. But now that I knew the code, I could make Jason send them any message I wanted. I could tell them it was getting too hot for him. He wanted to quit. He wanted them to get him safely out of Hong Kong. Or a letter that he'd written would be turned over to the police. I hope you're feeling better this morning, Mr. Drake. Well, just terrible, thank you, Mrs. Harkness. Poor Mr. Drake. Uh, I'm afraid I owe you an apology. What for? Well, some of the things that I said last night. Forget it. 
Silence, please. And now for the English conversation lesson. Mr. and Mrs. Smith are on the beach. The sea is very calm today, and the sun is shining so brightly. Where is our daughter, dear? It is a pity she did not come to the beach with us, instead of shutting herself up indoors. Drake, I wish you wouldn't insist on doing it this way. Or can you think of any other way? Yeah. Yeah, that's right, man. Yeah, I sent your message, man. Yeah, I want out. Any place you say, man. Yeah, yeah, I know it. Oh, listen, I, I wasn't kidding about that letter, you know. Okay, man. Do you know it? Yeah, I know where it is, but for heaven's sake, why didn't you let me take a dozen men and surround the oh, place? It wouldn't do any good to know you were coming. You'd close your net and you'd find nothing there but the night air. Well, let me just take a couple of men. No, better not. I'll tell you what, though. You can send one man, if you like. Good. Anyone special? How about the Indian? Sergeant Carrot? That's right. Well, he put up a good fight when I caught him picking Jason's pocket, didn't he? All right. I'll have him follow you. And if I don't hear from you within one hour, I'm coming in. All right. With an armored car, if necessary. Uh, two, three, four, eight, seven. So, you want to quit? That's right. Haven't we paid you enough money? Oh, yes, you pay enough. The things are getting too hot for me. You will quit when we want you to. And I hope for your sake, they'll never come to that. And now, I should like to know, how did you manage to break our code? Oh, nothing to it. Just a couple of hours juggling with the scripts. I see. Why did you do that? Natural curiosity. We'll have to teach you to restrain your curiosity. <laughs> Kent. This isn't Jason, it's Drake. He's working for Colonel Graves. Yes, I'm sorry. Jason was busy. I came instead. I hope you don't mind. Of course, there had to be somebody else at the radio station to get the scripts and mark them every night. I should have realized how much you hated Americans. It was very reckless of you to come here alone. Well, I didn't come alone. I brought one of my men with me. Sergeant Karib? He's not one of your men. He's working for me. No, he's not. Let him in. We'll see about that. Do this to a fellow artist, Miss Kent. Come in. Well, why did they let me out of the coop, man? Where are we going? Well, you kept your part of the bargain. Now we're keeping ours, Jason. We're taking you back to the States, home and dry. Stand trial. Thanks, man. Well, I'll be glad to get out of this lousy town anyhow. Say, why don't we stop off at the post office on the way back? I never picked up my money last Friday. I have $150 coming, you know. Well, that's all right. I picked it up for you. Well, what'd you do with it? I gave it to the Actress Benevolent Fund. Okay, man? Come on. Thank you. 